and in the Indonesia case of the IDP camp <coughs> with all of those services that the NGO was there providing. Uh, as they looked at that, that's you know, the religious identity being the primary divider. As the NGO who was there looked at what they were doing, they realized that some of their staff were from those villages. And that that was actually a key element of why those people were in that camp is because they knew that the staff uh, of that NGO was actually from those villages. You know, they were the cousins uh, and parents of the NGO workers and that there was a little bit of fuel uh, there from outside, as the outsiders also knew that the relatives were running the NGO, and so it looked very much like um, the NGO was supporting their family members in that situation. So it wasn't simply a Christian-Muslim issue, but there was also a family providing resources to family issue there. Um, <clears throat> They looked at it, they took, they took some action and uh, began to come up with some economic integration of the IDPs with the communities around them so that there was much more, uh, much more incentive for them to not resent the IDP camp in that place. And the NGO was then therefore providing some services to the villages and not only providing services within the IDP camp at that moment. So they expanded their reach at that place. Um, we don't always have all the resources that we want to be able to do these things. That NGO, that particular NGO, had the resources to expand in that situation. Uh, by contrast, uh, in Sudan, they didn't have any resources to change what they'd done in any sort of expansive way, but they were able to say, we can focus here and here on two separate things. So people are very creative in coming up with these options in this situation. Very, very creative. And that's my ultimate happy ending, is that people are very good at coming up with options when they think that they have the capacity to come up with options. And when they actually understand the context, pay much more attention to what the dividers are and what the connectors are. Because so often in conflicts, we ignore the connections. We don't see them. They don't seem very strong. They don't seem very relevant at that moment. Even though they're there, if we concentrate on those connectors and make use of them, people find that they actually have options in those situations for doing that work just a little bit differently, a little bit better, a little bit more bringing people together. Uh, and as we've gone back and talked to people about Do No Harm, how they've used it, what's been work successful and what, uh, what's worked for them, and we've talked to so many local organizations who have said that do no harm is a good first step, but not the ultimate step. They've told us that what they do as peace workers, even if that's not their mandate, what they do as peace workers is they think about what are the dividers and connectors in the situation, and they think about it every day. They reevaluate constantly which dividers seem to be most significant at this moment, which connectors seem to be the ones that we can support at this moment. And then they work on them every single day. They say, which divider can I try to mitigate today? Which connector can I try to support today? That's something that local people are extremely good at because they're members of that society, members of that context. They know it really well. It's much harder for outsiders, which is what many of us in this room are, though not all of us, to do that in that way, to be that sophisticated. And thus, that interaction with local people, local staff, uh, local communities, as we need to, to interact with them to learn the priorities for people so that we can see where we actually can make those connections that are effective and strong connections. So, <clears throat> to conclude, <laughs> I would just like to, to reiterate that do no harm as a, as a principle is one that is shared across medical uh, profession and the humanitarian profession now. It is an underpinning uh, basis for all of our work that what we do should not cause more harm uh, than the good that is out there. What that actually means in practice 
is trying to figure out precisely what in that context is worth supporting, is possible to support, as well as what in that context will we have inadvertent impacts on. This is doable. People are doing it all over the world uh, successfully and figuring it out uh, you know, one project at a time. You can, you can think ahead and anticipate those impacts and as then make choices to not have those impacts. And that just comes down to making sure we understand the context just well enough that we can make those decisions. And usually that means involving the local capacities and the local analytical skill of, of people in those communities to do so. Thank you. <coughs> You want to come back up here?